Hey everyone, um, we are part of the Kubernetes Code of Conduct Committee, and we're here today to talk a little bit more about what we, um, who we are, what we do, and kind of our latest project we've been working on, which includes a transparency report. And so, um, to start, I'm gonna let's, or I'm gonna have us do intros. Um, Celeste, do you wanna intro introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm Celeste. I'm a staff technical writer for the CNCF, um, though I participate in the Code of Conduct Committee as an individual contributor, not a representative of the LF. Um, and yeah, that's more or less me, Tim. I'm Tim Pepper. I'm a senior staff engineer at VMware and similarly, I'm obviously not a, a VMware Code of Conduct enforcer, but a member of the open source community here um, and Karen. Hey, so I'm Karen. Um, I work for Microsoft Azure and I'm a community manager on a few of our different open source projects like Helm um, and several others, but um, I am also a member of the Code of Conduct Committee. Um, well, with that, let's jump into the Code of Conduct concept and like what our committee is. Um, can either of you talk about like, you know, what we do, why we exist um, and kind of like what our scope is? All right, I, I'll take it. So the Code of Conduct Committee um, is a body we are elected by the steering committee and nominations can either be self nominations or nominations by others. Um, and we are here to effectively enforce community safety and what community safety really means in this regards is ensuring that any disagreements that people or different groups within the Kubernetes community have are resolved in a helpful way. Um, trying our best to sort of encourage good behavior and uphold the community code of conduct. Um, and as of yesterday, publishing transparency reports on the work that we do. Um, Tim, is there anything you'd like to add? I think a key thing to understand there is that we're an independent body. We try to be neutral and unbiased. And, mm -hmm. and I think people, people maybe re see a code of conduct, view it and potentially cynically think, oh, there's no there's, there's no accountability behind these things. It's just a, a feel good statement. But this body exists to make sure that there can be accountability. And as we approach that, we try to do it with a restorative mindset. It's also really common when you see a body like this to sort of presume it's it's the police or it's mm -hmm. punitive. We're here to like kick people out, but we're actually here to try and find positive, mutually positive restorative outcomes where there is conflict. And that's a, a really critical part of a healthy, sustainable community. All right, so um, we mentioned the transparency report. Um, can we talk a little bit more about what this is, um, what it isn't, and then you know why why did we start doing this, right? And like, what is the purpose? I'm going to tell it. Tim leave a charge this time. All right. So this is a, a concept that's out there in multiple forms. Like if you do a Google search for transparency report you'll come up with a, a variety of pieces of information on, on how these things are, are done. But the basic concept is to, to demonstrate that there is accountability, we need to, to give some sort of evidence of that. But it's also really important that the, it be confidential. If people are, are being escalated or escalating or being escalated in some way to the Code of Conduct Committee, that needs handled in a confidential way and again, without bias, and investigations need to happen. But somehow we have to give a way of indicating that that has happened. And the transparency report gives a form for that. So our goal here is to twice yearly do a report that gives some statistics and describes the, the types of areas in which conduct incidents were reported, demonstrate that investigations happened, and, and also give some statistics on action to show that it's not just sort of looking and shrugging like, oh, that, yeah, what a, I don't know what we could do about that, but that we, we are actually engaging and, and we are finding constructive outcomes. Yeah. Accountability happens, basically. Yeah. I think the other thing that I would add to is that I think both A, the concept of a code of conduct committee and B, the concept of a transparency report are a little bit intimidating to other people. Um, again, as Tim mentioned, people tend to think of code of conduct bodies as being very like punitive, being the cops, uh, being like the teacher in the classroom and you go and tattle on your friends too. Um, and similarly, I think um, transparency reports tend to be really intimidating uh, for a similar reason in terms of like, oh my God, no, they're doing stuff. 
Um, but the thing to keep in mind is being able to publish a transparency report, I think really means that the Kubernetes community is at a certain level of maturity where we can reflectively look at the work that we're doing, reflectively say that we all are humans and that we do human things like have disagreements. Um, and that as a code of conduct body, we are mature enough to publish that information in a way that doesn't out people who have reported to us. So it's really just a mark of community maturity and I think we should all be proud of ourselves. So let's get concrete on that. I'm gonna screen share and we can drop a URL into the chat for folks to see. Um, hopefully everybody can see that now. Just let me bounce over to Twitch. Hmm. Okay, yeah, there is the link there in the Twitch stream, I see. So things are coming through. So if you're looking at this document that's now committed in Git, you see the some, a little bit of context on it, the, the front matter of this page. But then the key thing is some obviously anonymized statistics. These are sort of raw counts to say that we've had incidents reported also through a variety of forums that these things come in. It's not just the Code of Conduct Committee. There's sort of a, a federation of moderation on different platforms. And the, the number of incidents is actually, like, you might think, wow, 85 incidents. I, I never heard about these things. Wow, interesting. And then we, we also, we do thorough investigations and some of the things are clearly a violation of the Code of Conduct. So we go and take action there. And I think one of the key things that we wanna highlight, highlight in just this first instance is like, these numbers are non-zero. There is activity happening, there's accountability happening, and probably that people generally are not seeing this, it's a sign that it's working. It's confidential and restorative outcomes are happening. You're not seeing these big fireballs of flame and, and conflict. We're, we're, we're going somewhere positive and constructive. Yeah, I think the other thing that I wanna call out um, is the Slack number looks really high. Uh, like 68 incidents seems like a lot. Uh, given the contributor community size, uh, it's important to note that Slack is probably the biggest platform or community space that we have actual numbers on. Uh, and I think there's over 100,000 people in the Slack instance, which is huge. Uh, I think we're actually one of Slack's biggest instances. Um, so given that, uh, and give, given uh, if Tim scrolls down, there's a bit of analysis. Um, Basically, all of these issues with Slack were people being banned from Slack for spamming others. Um, 68 out of 100,000 is actually not, it's not too bad in the grand scheme of things, though it does seem a little um, analogous uh, without that piece of context. So definitely internet. give it a read through. <laughs> you're, you're liable to have a spammer or a troll of some sort on a massive internet platform in any given week. So it's not surprising. I mean, you'd think every day this could be happening. And it's a it's a sign that people are, are we have a set of moderators who are watching and constructively handling things. Mm -hmm. Well, it also means that people are sharing things with these trusted moderators, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that same thing goes for us as well. Um, and I just wanted to note, like, this is our first transparency report. So, um, you know, it's kind of going to be our baseline for the next few ones. Um, no, or yeah, we don't have strong, strong statements about whether something is really good or really bad right now. Again, this is our baseline going forward. Um, and we, we hope that within this, like is, if people are seeing this and seeing that it's a constructive way to maybe get ahead of problems instead of dealing with things that are really, really falling apart, that maybe discussion is opened a little earlier on things and we actually see an increase in, in potential incident reports because people want to constructively get ahead of something they foresee might be a problem. So we're we're not, we don't want these numbers to be low that we feel like that would be a bad sign of, of trust in, in this body is a, that restorative function. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just to, to mention it, because I don't think we've mentioned it before, um, the code of conduct is published both on kubernetes.io and in the CNCF slash foundation repository on GitHub. Uh, we actually recently updated the code of conduct to version 1.1. So what's on kubernetes.io has not actually been updated first off, um, cause that literally went through like earlier today. Um, the second thing is 
if you are involved in the Kubernetes project or attending KubeCon Cloud Native Con, you can report incidents to conduct at kubernetes.io. Um, if you are another CNCF project, um, you want to go to, I believe, conduct at cncf.io. Um, if that's you know, interesting. You're, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the only other thing I would say is if you're on the fence about whether you should email us or not, um, email us. Um, it's usually better to to hear from people and say this actually isn't an issue than it is to not hear something that is potentially an issue. So, I really like that Celeste mentioned that the Kubernetes project's code of conduct is coming from the CNCF's code of conduct. And within our aspiration to do more transparency reporting going forward, this become a regular thing that this is our first baseline. We also aspire to bring more of the concept of code of conduct committee of transparency reporting of restorative action to the broader CNCF community. So whether that's through the, the um, contributor strategy body at CNCF or just putting, putting the word out like this here, doing conference talks where we are a body specific to the Kubernetes project, but the Kubernetes project is kind of unique and having done so many things around contributor experience from the early days and trying to formulate a strong governance system that enables community health and safety and sustainability that we're feeling a need to try and take that to other places as well to kind of level it up make it more generic and maybe make repeatable processes or documents or training and things like that that other projects could leverage as well Yeah, uh, cool. Well, I think that wraps up our goals and messaging pretty well. Yeah. Um, any parting thoughts? Give the give the transparency report a read. Um, I think over time it will end up being a very interesting measure of health for the community. Um, again, if you have if, you know if you have any questions, we also have a public channel. Um, available, I think, as of last KubeCon. So on the Kubernetes Slack instance, that's code dash of dash conduct. Um, please don't report anything in that channel because it is public. But like, if you just want to ask us questions, that's the best way to find us. Um, and yeah, again, if there's anything going on at KubeCon that you see, um, you can either email conduct at kubernetes.io uh, you can report it to any Linux Foundation staff. Uh, please be safe and please be respectful of each other and have a wonderful convention, conference. <laughs> Hard to add much to that. The one thing I would say also, though, is as you hear the code of conduct mentioned in meetings or in forums reminding, here's your reminder, we, we adhere to this code of conduct. It doesn't hurt to every now and then glance at it, read it over, and especially as there's a new updated version coming in just to kind of have a little more concrete awareness of what it means. But then also know, as we're here kind of trying to demonstrate that there's a body behind it and we care. We care about the project and the project health and safety. And we're here for you. Um, I will be at Hupon. And if anyone, anyone wants to ask me questions about the Code of Conduct Committee in person, I'm happy to chat. Um, I'll let you two speak for yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome. Say hello. Cool. All right. Uh, well, thank you everyone for joining us. Like I said, we'll be around um, and hopefully you take a look at our transparency report. Thanks. Right. Thanks everyone. Bye everybody. Bye.